A woman is murdered in her bed. The detective had a good suspect, but we don't have direct proof. The suspect was at sea with an airtight alibi. There certainly was very little forward motion for several years. Can Dr. Lee reconstruct what really happened that night? You see two different patterns. Connecticut State Police and Dr. Henry Lee were investigating the murder of Ellen Sherman. Ellen was five months pregnant at the time of her death. And while police suspected her husband Ed was responsible, he had an airtight alibi sailing with friends in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Police contact me. We work together, meticulously go through the scene. Dr. Lee carefully noted the location of each piece of evidence. The order in which Ellen's clothes were stacked on the floor might mean something. Next, Dr. Lee examined the bed where Ellen was found. During the examination, we found over 40 individual semen stain. But would the DNA point to an unknown killer? Downstairs, investigators found Friday morning's paper open in the kitchen, but Saturday's edition was still outside in the yard. This seemed to indicate Ellen was murdered sometime on Friday, but the coroner had set the time of death at Saturday. Something wasn't adding up. The medical examiner had declared that the cause of death was manual strangulation, but the ligature marks on Ellen's neck remained a mystery. At the Connecticut State Lab, Dr. Lee made impressions of the items he recovered from the bedroom for comparison. He closely studied the different patterns under forensic lights. You see two different patterns. One is a tippy. Dr. Lee thought he knew what had caused the ligature marks. Using a model, Dr. Lee tested whether Ellen Sherman's underpants could stretch enough to wrap three times around her neck. The answer was yes. Next, body fluids from the bed were tested. But the DNA profile showed that Ed Sherman's was the only one present, making it unlikely that an unknown assailant had sexual contact with the victim as police first believed. They still suspected Ed was involved, but they needed a motive and they found one. Ed and Ellen Sherman's marriage was not as happy as it seemed. Detective Malchik wondered if things might have come to a head that weekend. A hunch Len Fredrickson confirmed. She knew he was going sailing that weekend and she told me when he gets packed, I'm gonna tell him to just keep going because he's not coming back to this house. She wanted the business, she wanted the house. She said he can have his sailboat and his girlfriend. Avoiding the financial ruin of a divorce was a viable motive for murder. Dr. Lee again studied the photographs from the scene. It's on to the setting eight. That's the highest setting. That's pretty strange. Dr. Lee believed it was possible that Ellen's bedroom had been cold enough to slow down the decomposition of her body and asked the medical examiner to take a second look at the evidence. Because the air conditioner was set so high, delayed the body decomposition. She issued a new autopsy report. The time of the death, more likely Friday afternoon. It was a major breakthrough in the case. If Ellen had been killed on Friday, Ed Sherman no longer had an alibi. Moving the case ahead, the state's attorney convened a secret grand jury to decide if formal charges should be brought. But before the grand jury was able to reach a decision, news of the secret proceedings leaked out prompting a new witness to contact Detective Malchik. The phone call came from one of Ed Sherman's sailing buddies. His daughter, Kirsten, had come forward with new information about something that had occurred on the night Ellen was murdered. And she remembered that Sherman had been at her house and that she uh, heard Sherman talking on the phone. I heard him say, uh, I love you too, don't forget to put out the garbage. She said, but the problem was he was talking to a ringing phone. That put the last piece of puzzle together. After six years, Ed Sherman was going on trial for the murder of his pregnant wife. Ellen's time of death was crucial for both the state and the defense. It came down to forensic science. We was able to show the air conditioner that could change the body decomposition because the room was so cold. The medical examiner testified Ellen had been killed between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Friday night, before Ed Sherman had been picked up at his house by a shipmate. 
And then the young girl testified about overhearing the staged phone call that night. After a six-year investigation, it took the jury just four days to reach a verdict. Ed Sherman was sentenced to 50 years in prison. This case shows it's so important. Detectives have to have persistence. Forensic scientists have to work together. And most importantly, the community, the witness have to come forward.